Welcome to Painting of Winter Splendor with Mystic Mountain Brush Categories from Corel Painter 2018. I'm Painter Master Elite Karen Boniker and then in this class I will demonstrate how I painted winter, this uh, particular winter landscape from start to finish. I'll show you some simple yet effective skills to improve your paintings. Together we will create a beautiful landscape painting and by the end of this lesson you will have a full arsenal of techniques and ideas for future paintings as well. One of the essential elements that separate works of quality from those that are less appealing often comes down to color schemes. Landscape paintings of winter can get pretty boring really fast. And why? Because the artist sometimes makes the big mistake of stopping at white. And I emphasize white as many of us know. Snow is never really just white. It's one of the most reflective and uh, reflective of qualities in landscape paintings. Just like the darks in a painting, the lights or whites must be created through dynamic color mixing to grab the viewer's attention. Shadows on snow are richly colored in blue and gray violet. And the winter skies that often seem one-dimensional are subtly prismatic. This tutorial will show you how to paint winter splen splendor using Corel Painter 2018 and the Mystic Mountain brush category. Let's get started. I'd like to begin by pointing out that it's often uh, essential and easy uh, to open up a custom palette where you have all your brushes that you're going to be using. In this tutorial, I will go through each of the brushes I'm using, paper textures, the settings of the brush, so you can follow along. Also notice that I'm using the mixer pad, which includes the Bob Ross mixer colors on here. I've also added a couple of my own color choices here in violet shades that I believe that I'll, I will more than likely incorporate into the painting at some point as well. So I'll be pulling from these colors and doing a little bit of mixing as well and maybe developing some of those colors that I want to use in the painting. We're going to start by um, uh, creating a canvas and this is the uh, part of the lesson that you know you really have to basically decide where you're going to be placing images within your painting. It's important that as you're going forward, we're not working with a reference, we're not working with a photo reference or a sketch. So at this point, you know, some of the areas and some of the places that you, uh, you know, might decide to put a mountain, a mountain doesn't necessarily mean that it has to stay there. It means that you can make it larger or smaller by using your uh, layer adjuster tool. And that's part of the power of working with layers. I'm going to always begin by adding a new layer. And uh, for the most part, I will be working with what we call pick up underline color. So this means that the, as I put the paint down on layer one, and if I do any blending on that layer, it's actually going to pick up the white of the canvas and I'm going to get some nice uh, blending going on. Working with layers is an ideal way to approach the painting. And layers, as I said, will give you extra power and flexibility. You will work with several different brushes for this painting. And again, I will always let you know which brush variants I'm using, the size of the brush, and any other relevant information you need. We're going to begin with the uh, Mystic Mountain brush category and we're going to choose the two inch landscape brush here and as always make sure to reset that tool so you know it's set to default. On the paper texture option here we're just going to use the basic paper texture. We're going to start off um, now this again you have the option to work with colors, thalo blue, Prussian blue, titanium white, mix up some colors here, or uh, if you're using thalo blue, use the whole spectrum of the color gamut here, from the 
darkest value to the lightest value and then somewhere in between. And this will work nicely uh, for skies. So what we'll start off with is maybe a mid thalo blue here. And all we're going to do is that typical, what we learned in our last um, exercise about actually just creating these nice big cross hatches and working across the canvas. And it's okay, um, and in fact, it is pre preferable that you leave um, a bit of that white coming through. Uh, start thinking about where you might be placing your mountains, uh, where that would be appropriate. And uh, it's always good to leave a little bit of white because that's the area where you can start to develop, um, you know, you really can begin to develop your cloud formations above the, above the mountains. And oftentimes I'll, I'll let this blue just kind of float down. And you can see that these are just really random brush strokes, nothing real um, hard to do here. Just go ahead and set that in. And also if your clouds are going to be about in this area, as we develop the lake below, uh, leave a little bit of that white right below here too because that will uh, certainly act as your uh, reflection area. You can also paint that in later if you need to. I'm also going to uh, bring a little bit of this darker blue value up into the corners here. I like a little darker values at the corners uh, because that helps to bring attention uh, to the focal area. We're going to bring the reset setting on the brush down to 0% and use the same brush to blend and soften the sky. Again, we'll work back and forth with our brush strokes to blend the entire sky. And again, I start up at the top and I'm just going to actually just very softly and randomly blend out these brush strokes. And again, I'm still thinking about where I'm going to be putting things, where I want my uh, clouds to be placed. So at this point, everything can be very softly. Uh, this is more of a crisscross. You want to create that really painterly look as you develop this area. The next step is to start with the sky. Uh, start with the uh, developing the water below the lake area. And again, I'm going to load my brush with the phthalo blue, but this time I'm going to go a little bit darker in the value. I want my water to be a little bit lighter than the sky. The sky will always tend to be our lightest value. So we'll go a little bit darker. And just at the corners here, we're going to, um, oops, let me get that out of the way. I'm going to pull from the edges and again I want to remember to leave some of this white area because this is going to be where my clouds are going to be reflecting uh, into the into the water. Again, we'll take this brush. Notice that I'm working at about 76% on the opacity. The brush size is 60.6%. And the reset setting I'm now going to take down to 0%. And this again is going to become our blending brush. And I'm going to actually pull from the right edge and pull inward to create this just nice soft blending of color towards that white area but not completely taking it out just blending and then just some nice soft back and forth brush marks to finish off that blending And at this point, you should have a nice, simple horizon coming 
at this point here an idea of where our clouds and mountains will be placed and uh, a little bit of that white area left in here that we can use uh, strategically <laughs> to create our reflections into the water. The next brush we're going to use is called the um, is a soft cloud detail brush and just the same for the same reasons that snow is not completely white clouds are not either they're very also very uh, reflective in terms of the light that they catch and they and the light that they bounce off into other directions and other parts of the clouds so you can have a lot of fun here uh, building your cloud formations um, by simply sampling and for me I like to use the shortcut key which is the alt key which picks up um, the colors around this particular area and I'm just very very softly notice my reset is at 1% bleed at 90 uh, brush size at 53 now this is again this is an area that pretty much is up to you on where you want to go with it uh, you may have some of your own ideas on how you want to develop your clouds um, my idea in this particular painting is that uh, the the mountains are going to become very important to me in this particular painting so I don't want the mount uh, the clouds to overshadow the mountains I want them to work in harmony with the mountains but not take away from them too much so I won't put as much importance into the clouds as I normally would I love painting clouds but I will keep this relatively simple uh, in terms of what I have going here um, notice that I continue to sample the colors using my alt key as I go through I'm just sampling these different blues uh, and values as I go through and very very gently and softly I'm just floating in the appearance of some clouds in the sky Now, um, I like to pick up um, different colors to put into the sky as well. And a lot of that will come a little later in your painting when you're actually making conscious color decisions on how you want to uh, portray something. So, you know, keep that in mind. A little bit of alizarin crimson on the very light side here. Uh, floating just another layer of clouds maybe into this area and again very soft pressure here uh, very 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 soft pressure and uh, watching my color here trying to keep it very much on the light side just to add a little bit of color interest to the sky And maybe a, a basically what this is doing too is creating another level of clouds in the sky. If you enjoy painting clouds, you can certainly add more. And remember th that this is your painting and you are free to use your artistic license. Much of the detail will be in the middle ground of the painting as well as in the foreground. And if the sky is soft and has less detail, then again, it will help to bring attention to the mountains and foreground areas of the painting. If you want to do a little soft and subtle blending, the uh, soft cloud blender in the Mystic Mountain Brush category is a good brush to use and I like to use it uh, just at the bottom of the clouds just to soften those edges a little bit
again, you know, you can go as far as you want with clouds. It's, uh, you know, it's your painting. I've added another layer here, and now it's time to, to start developing the mountains. And I want to introduce you to a new brush called the Fan Soft Brush that you will find at the digitalartacademy.com website. And there are several brushes there that you can download and import into your uh, Mystic Mountain brush category. So it's a fun brush to use, and I'm going to show you a couple of ways of working with it. But I especially like it for mountains. Um, I still feel that the uh, two inch landscape brush is another good brush that you can use here. But uh, I want to give you a cursory um, explanation on how to use this brush so you feel comfortable going forward with it. The Fan Soft brush um, at its default uh, size is 51. Um, it's about 80% on the, on the paper texture, 45% 40 on the opacity. And right now what we're going to do is actually bring that opacity up because what we're going to be doing is bringing in our mountains. You'll notice that I've added a new layer here. It's important that uh, you take a few little uh, sample uh, brush strokes here so you understand how to work with a brush. Um, this brush in particular is very fluid, very, you can really just get very expressive with it. It's a lovely brush to work with. Command A and backspace to remove that paint on the layer. Um, and then I also want to bring out one other uh, tool that you'll want to use on the advanced brush controls, which you can open from the property bar of this particular brush, we'll want to come down to this setting called Dry Out. And I usually work at 85.2, which is the default, or about 237 on my other end. And the reason I say this is because this will give you a little more brush loading so that you'll have more paint on this brush when you start to work with it. And this is ideal when you start to bring in your mountains. We'll go back to default when we actually apply the break paint or the, the look of rocks and um, snow on those mountains. Now, we're going to start off with a very, um, you know, I want to be able to make these brushes or uh, make these mountains appear like they're in the distance. So I don't want them too strong. Uh, in terms of value, too saturated in color. But I also remember, and will note here, that we're working on a layer, so we do have that ability to bring the opacity down if we want to push those mountains back in the distance a little. But I'll also show you some tricks on how you can do that with actual color as well. So we'll begin with uh, just a nice, soft, uh, color and decide where we're going to actually you know place our first mountaintop so maybe right about here and I'm just going to start with again that V shape so we'll go from the top and down top and down and maybe another mountain here and down you know this really depends on you know where you want to add your mountains how tall you want them to be you know, I can continue to work on this one a little bit. But size also becomes important here. Um, you know, in the overall scheme, you have to think about the other elements that you're going to be adding. You know, how big do these mountains, how big should they appear in the distance? You know, that really depends on how much importance you want to bring into the scene. You know, what's important to you. And I'm just going to go ahead and bring in a couple of more little mountains right here. And something like that. Now 
Now I'm remembering also again that I am working on a layer so I do have that option to play a little bit and reposition things if the size is too big, if I feel I'm going to have some issues there with overall composition, then I have that opportunity now to, to work with that. And I am going to go over to my uh, toolbar and select the Layer Adjuster tool here. And then uh, I'm going to hold down my Shift key to constrain the proportions. And I'm going to bring the size of this down a little bit. And I'm also going to bring it down on the horizon a wee bit as well. And then commit it. And I'm much happier with that now. I like the size a little bit better there. And again, I'm using the Fan Soft Brush to just float these nice soft colors in to begin with. I'm going to then move over to my 2-inch landscape brush. Again, we're going to have that set to reset 0%. And I'm going to use that now to simply blend these areas and just take these areas of darker value and just blend them softly. I want these mountains here to appear a little bit more in the distance, so I'm going to maybe soften those a little bit further. And I'll use this blending technique here to kind of create this feeling of a little bit of a, a valley down below here. And I like doing it this way as well because it also helps to you can start thinking about, well, maybe I want to add another mountain somewhere and I can blend, kind of blend that in as well. You'll notice through these blending steps that we've created these nice valleys and areas that we can develop more mountains as we go forward. We're going to go back to the fan brush and up to the property bar and we're going to change the paper texture to Window Frost, which is in the default paper library called the Watercolor Papers. So we'll select that. And once we've selected that, on that same panel, you'll be able to open the Papers panel. And now you have some ability to control, um, to be able to control the paper texture that you're using. We're going to come down to Random Grain Rotation on the Grain setting and set that because we want to be able to have uh, random texture coming through as we create the look of uh, snow on the mountaintops. We're going to start off by a few little brush strokes just to determine whether you like what's going on there, whether you want your texture to be a little bit bigger. And um, I think I like that. And in terms of color, you can start off with titanium white. But remember that uh, as we pull in colors here, we also want to make sure that we're thinking about um, the reflective color of, of snow and the, that beautiful um, color colors that we can add to our paintings to emphasize um, what we're seeing here on the uh, reflect reflective qualities of the snow. So don't feel that you have to choose white. Um, sample some of the colors that you see around the painting here and start to uh, actually pull in 
those colors as well and you're going to have you'll all of a sudden find that you've got a much more interesting painting when you start uh, thinking about using different colors uh, than just what you see um, or what we preconceive snow to be just white so be sure to pick up those other colors very important so again sample use that alt key to sample the color here um, you can bring this paper scale up a little if you want to maybe reflect a little more texture coming through on that brush can rotate the grain, have different colors coming through, uh, different patterns coming through, and most importantly, do check your dab options to ensure that apply dab stencil is selected. Um, once you do that, you're going to get much better texture coming, coming through on those mountains, and I'm going to back up a little bit here. Again, I'm just going to kind of sample, and uh, I think the other uh, thing to consider here when you're putting in these little areas of uh, or starting to develop these little snow covered mountains, the lightest pressure uh, is usually the most effective when you're uh, painting in these mountains. So to get that texture, just be very, very soft with your brush uh, in terms of the pressure that you apply very very soft you don't need a lot of pressure here to get uh, that nice uh, rough texture coming through from the brush so very very soft going to go ahead and develop a few little areas here where some more mountains Anytime you have a light side of the mountain, always make sure you have a dark side as well because that will help to build dimension and depth in your painting. So there's always going to be a light side and a dark side. Um, feel free to work with your phthalo blue, get into those different values and start going forward developing the texture that you're looking for. I like this combination or this break of light and dark. When you apply pressure to this brush, firm pressure, you'll notice that you get some blending and this is another beautiful part of this brush here. So do play with that as well. And always sample your colors, pull out a mountain where you can and give it a dark side and that will give it nice dimension sample colors and just continue to work on your mountains this is an area that um, I personally can spend a lot of time on because uh, I really like to create lots of volume in my mountains so the the use of different values of color becomes very important Constantly I'm sampling color. Random grain on the paper texture. So make sure you get that. So you can always have some nice variation of grain here.
Let's create another mountain right in here. Dark side. And all of a sudden, there it is. Let's build this one up a little bit. Think about light. It's so important. Think about where the light is hitting the tops of these mountains. Why would it be lighter here? Why would it be darker on the back side? This all has to do with light source. The only time that we'll really go to a pure white is when we want to bring out little areas of highlights in the mountain range. So we'll pick up some pure white and again this is just very 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 soft pressure and just be very strategic about where you do this. Uh, you don't have to go overboard with it. You just want to create a little more feeling of dimension and, and uh, space between each range of mountains here. So you can do that by just capitalizing on the lightest value of snow and using that just strategically in certain areas just to highlight. And we'll end up with something similar to that. Finally, uh, with the mountains, we'll move to the two inch uh, landscape brush again. We'll go back to our paper panels and change the paper texture to basic paper. Again, we have our reset at 0%, 76% on the opacity, and about 36 on the brush size. And we're going to begin. Uh, you know, this will depend upon the size of canvas you're working on and what feels good and right to you. But we're just going to start blending the bottoms of the mountains. Uh, the, the tops of the mountain ranges will always appear to be a little more detailed, crisp. And the bottoms will be less detailed. So again, I'm using very soft pressure here and just doing some very subtle blending to the mountains. And this, in turn, will push them back into the distance a little bit. And force them to recede in terms of value. In traditional painting, this would be somewhere where I would uh, probably pick up um, a glazing brush and do some additional glazing to push the mountains back a little bit further. And the color I would use would be more on a violet end here. The soft glazing brush is a good one. Um, I would add a new layer. And then all we want to do is just very softly float a little of that violet to the lower part of the mountains here. And that will subtly add some lovely color changes, of course, in terms of atmospheric conditions, but also push those mountains back to the distance. We're going to start now with um, the next brush, and we're going to be using a brush called the Mystic Mountain Evergreen Brush, and you'll find that in the Digital Art Academy Bonus Brushes section. And again, you can sample the colors that you'd like to use uh, 
in this case, we're just going to bring these um, mount uh, these trees in just at the base of the mountains. and they should be a little lighter in value and notice that I've added a new layer here and we're going to string those directly straight across I tend to like color so a lot of times I'll make some decisions about adding some different colors into the trees just to mix it up a little bit. And then we're going to then take the 2 inch landscape brush. We'll set that again to, we're going to bring the opacity up a little bit on that brush and sample the color and then we're just going to really gently pull down from the from the base of the trees and just create a little bit of a reflection into the water here. This a lot of this area here will be covered, so I'm already thinking about that. I may bring up my opacity a little bit further. And we're just going to pull that directly down from the trees. The other brush that works nicely for this, and I'll move over to that, is the um, brush called the Sparkle on the Water. This is also in your uh, Mystic Mountain. Um, I like using this, this brush for uh, reflections as well. And uh, once you get some color in there, then you can go over it and just do basically this pulling down effect. And then once you get some of that color in, then bring the brush size up a little bit and very gently just go over it very, very softly just to break the water up and break the reflection up a little bit. you get a nice effect. A little bit bigger and just softly pull that through. It, it gives you not only a reflective quality but also breaks the water up a little, gives it the feeling that maybe there's a little breeze coming across that water. And again, very, very soft pressure here. Hardly putting anything on the canvas here. OK. Now, again, back to our uh, two inch landscape brush. We're going to bring the opacity down and I am going to very very softly just blend these this tree line just very very gently just want to push that push it back a little bit and one of the tricks we learned um, about creating a shoreline would be to pick up the pinch cloud brush out of the mystic mountain we'll use our V key V as in Victor and we'll start at this one point and then just simply pull that out to the edge and let it go. And this can, sometimes can create a really nice effect um, in terms of a, um, uh, a shoreline in the distance. And I, I kind of like that. I like what happened there, so I'm just, just going to leave it. And again, we'll reset the brush by hitting the B key, which takes us back to the brush tool. And we'll go over to the... Um, number five painting knife and we're going to pick up some titanium white here 
And this is a uh, thick paint brush, so it's actually going to add a new layer when we start to paint. And we're going to uh, simply paint in a little bit of a, a distant shoreline here. And this can be very, very subtle. Uh, it doesn't have to be real strong. Um, what I tend to do is just go ahead and paint it in, no matter how thick it comes in, because I'm going to go back into it with some of my tools here. And the tool would be to open up the thick paint option here and simply instead of painting with grain, we'll erase. And at that point, I can come in here and just subtly uh, erase some of that shoreline where I don't want it. OK, very good. All right, so let's move on now to the, to the foreground area, developing our trees and snow. We're going to use the foliage and tree brush here. And on a new layer, we're going to go ahead and paint in a distant bank of trees. And uh, at this point, just go ahead and paint them in just to about this midpoint here. And I like a little bit of firm pressure on this. And this will be our distant tree bank here. Um, you can certainly take a little time um, to develop some of these trees in the background, add some, you know, the look of uh, branches. Remember, these are distant, so they don't have to be extremely detailed. Use the 2-inch blender with the reset set to 0% and just blend down, pulling the paint down towards the bottom. I've extended those um, trees out a little bit further. And again, I'm just going to softly pull those out. and very softly blend. I'm going to uh, experiment a little bit here. And we'll choose, the again, the um, pinch cloud brush. We're just going to select that V key. We'll make a smaller brush size here, around 16.4 to start with. Set it, and then pull it out and just create a nice, another nice little area of um, land. And that's done with the pinch brush. We'll go back to the 2-inch landscape brush. We'll bring the reset up now. We'll do a little painting with this brush. And we're just going to pick up a real soft kind of, make sure we go back to B. And we'll just pull a little bit of white coming out from this tree area here. A little bit lighter at the edge because more light would be hitting this area. And we can go a little darker here where less light is. And then we'll sample this darker color and just a little bit of value change right at this point here just to show the shoreline. OK. The next step we'll do is pick up our foliage and tree brush. And um, we do have some fun new brushes here that we can use. Uh, the foliage and trees, um, the uh, fan brush for creating your, uh, your evergreen trees is a nice brush to experiment with it as well. Um, let's go ahead and actually pick up that one and play with it. 
um, for the trees we'll want to make sure we go with quite a dark value and at this point you have to really just decide where you want to place your first tree. I like again working on layers because that gives me the opportunity to pretty much decide where I want to uh, you know if a tree doesn't work out and I want to start again I can certainly do that. So at this point you would just go ahead and start painting in that tree uh, again, make sure you get a wide, a nice variety, an abstract a sort of shape to your tree. And using that fan brush with the settings I currently have here, just go ahead and paint in your first fir tree. I'll take the 2 inch landscape brush again with reset to zero and um, I'm going to just softly blend just the bottoms of the trees, just to soften it up a little bit. And then we're going to pick up a brush called Fir Tree Glazing, and we're going to actually use this brush um, to develop our the look of snow uh, just softly resting on on the branches. And uh, you don't want to go overboard with this. Um, this just, you want to do this very, very lightly. The other brush you could use here is the fan brush as well. But we just want to show the effect of maybe just a little dusting of snow. So we don't have to go way overboard. Also notice that we're not um, using white again, that we're picking up those lovely reflective qualities that the snow would have. Um, one of the goals in this particular landscape would be to, you know, continue to show that look of, of cold. You want to keep those colors on the cool side. So just a little bit of snow goes a long way. Again, the other brush I would use would be the fan brush here. Um, this one also does a lovely job just for creating that kind of the, the snow just settled on the branches. And again, the color is important here. Think about where light is hitting. This brush works nicely too because it does create that voluminous effect and gives the branches volume and dimension. The foliage and tree brush I would use here just to indicate the maybe a little bit of a trunk coming through here. A little darker over here. And then you can also use it just to pull in you know, maybe the look of a few little sticks and stems coming through the snow. We'll pick up the landscape brush, two inch landscape. We're going to start with just uh, titanium white here. And again, we can do this on a new layer. And we'll begin by floating in just a nice soft, we'll make sure our reset is up, and we'll just paint in a nice bank of snow coming down. And we'll bring that over from this side as well. And this is where you can really have some fun with color.
can always go a little bit lighter just at the edge here where you know that there's going to be a lot of light reflecting. And then, of course, darker values can work with some blues or shadows. And then, of course, your uh, reset down to zero and then do some blending. Use the Fan Soft brush in the default setting to create a little extra texture in your snow bank after you've done your blending with the landscape brush, 2 inch landscape brush. This will give you some nice variation of color, uh, add a little more texture, and then the final step would be uh, if you want to add another tree, you know, think about where you would put that tree. Um, we'll go over to the frosted foliage and um, we'll start with a darker value first and use that to create um, the look of foliage in the foreground here. And also over on the right hand side. And then we'll sample some of the colors of the snow and go right over the top of them. But a uh, good idea to leave some of that darker value coming through because that, again, will help to create that feeling of dimension within the foliage. You can finish off with adding additional um, tree trunks um, branches and finally I would again pick up my two inch landscape set to reset zero and just at the base here, we're going to blend these a little bit, soften these edges out a little bit. And finishing with the fan soft brush, really pop up your whites here to bring your lights and darks. And uh, use that to accentuate the color. You may even want to go to pure white just to pull out, you know, maybe some additional snow banks. Emphasize that bank here and then also pull in some contrasting value changes in terms of shadows. And I love working with um, the foliage and tree brush. I like to set that again to using paper texture and the uh, window frost paper texture, making sure apply dab stencil is created selected and uh, again use that to pull out some additional tree trunks and at this point you really you know this is your painting you go with where you want to go with it and just have fun at this point also at the end of your painting it pretty much will tell you uh, where you might need to go in terms of strengthening the values uh, in the background. So if you feel like, uh, for example, the mountains are not giving you enough co value contrast, 
you know, think about darkening some of the areas. Again, I would probably pick my fan, uh, making sure that I have that window frost selected, and maybe just play a little bit more with, um, you know, some darker values there. Again, you can get away with that at the tip tops of the mountains, but then as you progress down, downward, you know, watch it that you don't uh, bring in too dark a value there. You want to keep this, keep this area looking distant. Um, here again is where I may play up using that soft brush, and maybe that nice violet again, and just pushing that area back a little bit further. Okay. Your final steps would be to evaluate your painting, making sure that um, your values are holding together, that you have that feeling of distance, that you have that feeling of the foreground, middle ground, and background, and of course that background receding. Work on your clouds. Uh, continue to work on your mountains to develop uh, and get exactly what you're looking for. Um, incorporate all the brushes from the Mystic Mountain Brush category experiment and uh, try out some of the new ones as well. So I hope you had fun with this tutorial and I look forward to seeing what you come up with. Take care. Mm -hmm.